This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to another edition of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Gary Financial. Wherever you happen to be in Southern California, we appreciate your deciding to spend a little time with us today. We're going to talk about getting you to and through retirement. Logan Sadler, of course, at Gary Financial in Hemet and Redlands and on the radio, of course, every week. And Logan, it's great to be back with you. Yeah, great to be back. I can't, uh, can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be than right here with this radio show show and uh, spending an hour with you. One of my favorite times of the week is when we get the chance to sit down and talk about all these things. And and one of the main reasons, and I know you can certainly identify with this, is that you really enjoy helping people and Mm -hmm. um, helping folks understand what this is all about and telling them the importance of going ahead and making that phone call so they can come in and have a one-on-one conversation with you. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-7526. That number will get you a discovery meeting. Call that number, leave your name and phone number. You'll get a call back and then you can uh, have a discovery meeting, get to know Logan. He can get to know you and all of that's not going to cost you one penny. Not going to obligate you to do anything either. 888-823-PLAN. I'll give you that number several times during the show, but uh, why not go ahead and write it down? You know, in the news lately, Logan, several stocks have experienced significant volatility in the past few mm-hmm. weeks in response to their earnings reports. In your opinion, should these earnings reports be affecting share prices as violently as they apparently are? Yeah, that's a great question. And like like you said, Ron, anybody that's been watching the news or, or has any brokerage accounts or investments accounts, you've probably been paying pretty close attention. There has been a few different companies out there and quite a bit of them. The whole overall market uh, to start the year off has been kind of bumpy. So I think the biggest thing with, with the price, and, and if I think it should be hitting it as violently, in some cases, yes, and in some cases, no. And I know that's not, not the uh, detailed answer some of you might be looking for, but in some cases, there, there is some below average earning reports that is something to not cost concern, but maybe just you know pull off the trigger a little bit, I guess you could say. But there is companies out there, like I know, just for example, Facebook, Netflix, NVIDIA, NVIDIA a lot of those companies have just been on such a hot streak the last few years. Yeah. And uh, you know some of them are down 30% at their lows to start the year off. So I mean, uh, that's significant volatility for a lot of these companies that have been more of a staple over the last few years. So I, I think now more than ever, it's just a really good time to take a look at your finances, take a look at if you do hold individual stocks or mutual funds or whatever you have, it's just make sure you're properly diversified and and to make sure that you're kind of ready if there is a storm coming because there there has been a lot of increased volatility and like you said it has been rather rather violent to start the year off a good time to take a look at all those things and logan sadler of course can help you do that and a lot of people have been taking a look at the olympics coverage on television mm-hmm. recently uh financial planning at the olympics is uh, something i'd like to talk about here you might not think you can learn anything about financial planning from watching the Winter Olympics, but perhaps you can. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've been watching some of the figure skating, which I think is just just amazing. And Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if there's anything that we can learn about our financial planning from figure skating. Yeah, I think there is. And and to to kind of the first point there, I'm a pretty good financial advisor. I am a horrible skater. I, I can't. I can't. Uh, can't do any of it. So when I watch them on TV, like you said, it is is quite amazing to see how great they are at it. Yeah. And you know, in that sport, in in, a, in like figure skating, is such a subjective judging sport. Like where you're looking at how one might do it versus the other. You have things like one might be more technically sound, one might be a better, uh, you know, outperform them in grace and elegance and smoothness, um, and they might score higher. So there's a lot of different ways that figure skating kind of figures into uh, how the outcome is. And people often make that same, that same problem in the financial world. For some folks, it's easy to get stuck in a fancy office or the sales brochures or a well-crafted sales presentation. 
And and that's something you really got to make sure you're looking at it from all different points of views and not making sure you're making decisions based off substance and, and not just, or making sure you're making them off substance and not just style. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things, especially when you're looking at financials is you want to make sure that they might have that big, bright, brand new office or, or this, that, and the other, but you really want to make sure where their value is, is in the planning and the investments, the tools and the comfortability you feel with the investments and the plan. And I think that's where a lot of the judgment, if you will, should be made to where that's where a lot of the emphasis should be you know, pointed to, not how successful the advisor is or how, how great the office is. Yes, some of that is important in some aspects, but you also want to make sure that the planning and the investment tools and, and, and this, that, and the other are very, very important over uh, you know, some of those more technical details. And don't just fall for the glossy brochure with a lot of boilerplate stuff there. You know? Yeah, yeah, we've all we've all uh, whether whatever industry it's in, you know, whether it's a window salesman or whoever, we've all fell into that before. So I think, like you said, not just they might have a nice brochure, but what does it all mean, right? Is it something that's obviously is it is it something that's just salesy or is it something that really does make sense for you? and is a great solution. And like I always say with financials, probably hear me say it a million times on the radio, but it, you really want to make sure you're meeting with a financial advisor, a financial planner that looks at more of the big picture than just you know a, a salesman. And also a financial fiduciary, one who has the, your yeah. best interests at heart always. We're talking about financial planning at the Olympics. Believe it or not, there are some things that we can learn from our financial planning, from watching the Olympics on TV. And uh, one of the events that I've seen some lately is the biathlon. That's where, <laughs> you know, they're cross-country skiing, and then all of a sudden they've got to, you know, they're going really hard, and I'm sure they're tired. And then all of a sudden they got to stop, pull out the rifle, and then <laughs> shoot at a target. I mean, who in the world came up with that idea in the first place? Just kind of a strange a strange sport, I think. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I guess there's some things like that in the financial world. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. And like you said, what a what an unusual sport. I think that we kind of ran out of things to, to watch on TV, so they just kind of made this up. And uh, <laughs> hey, you know, if, if people can do it well, people will watch it on TV, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Um, but you're right. There is a lot of that in the financial world. I think a lot of people expect investments to do that. They expect investments to look where they're not too risky. They, they, they give us plenty of growth. They can have a good income. They are tax efficient. When in reality, just like that, just like skiing and shooting, you can't do it all in one typically. And that's what I always say with investment planning is, trust me, I meet with a lot of clients. They'll come in and they're a retired. They're getting ready to retire and they're an RN for Kaiser, right? They're a nurse for Kaiser. They might have a million dollars and they're looking for tax-free, they're looking for safety, they're looking for good returns, and they're probably looking for liquidity. And uh, you know, those four things you can actually accomplish in one investment plan, but not one individual product, right? The stock market won't offer all of those things. The annuities won't offer all of those things. Insurance products and Roth IRAs, and they won't offer everything in that realm. But throughout a a comprehensive investment plan, you really can get, uh, you know, sometimes mostly all of those covered in one plan. So you want to make sure, again, that you're kind of being diversified with investments and making sure that obviously we're not being too conservative, we're not being too aggressive, and making sure that we're looking at things through that tax efficient lens to make sure you're covering all these things. Because those four things I mentioned are very important to a good retirement plan, but you might have to do some some of that outside of just one investment. Yeah, and it really is amazing how there are a lot of people who can ski well and a lot of people who can shoot well, but it's really rare when you can find somebody who can combine those two. And the same thing goes in the financial world. Logan Sadler can help you. Uh, Call this number, 888-823-PLAN, and get a conversation going with Logan about your particular financial situation. One of the most exciting events for me in the Olympics is always the bobsled. I mean, when you're in a bobsled, you're going really fast, and it's just kind of a crazy thing. But you remember this movie several years ago? Uh, I think it was Cool Runnings with John Candy. Yes, yes. Jamaican bobsled team. You had to pull for them, and I guess there's some lessons we can learn from from uh, from that uh, from that movie and from the bobsled uh, sport uh, as well about financial planning. 
Yeah, and great, great point, Ron. You're always saving the show. There were some good movie recommendations. That is a great movie. Great movie. Um, yeah, with bobsledding, I think we're all kind of in agreement. You have to kind of be in perfect harmony when you're moving those things around, or else things are going to go horribly wrong. You really got to be in sync. And uh, that's really in the same with retirement planning. You can look at social security, uh, pension choices, investment options, tax strategies. You really need to coordinate to make sure all of those are working together. I see some clients where they come in and they have sometimes a mix of investments. They might have, like I say, a 401k, an IRA, a Roth, and they might have a brokerage account and maybe some life insurance policies. But sometimes how they're invested doesn't really make sense for what there is they're trying to accomplish. They don't complement each other, each of those investments. So I think the most important thing with a portfolio is you want to make sure you have different asset classes, you have different risk tolerances, and you have different goals sometimes for each of those investments. Some of it might be safety, some of it might be income, some of it might be extreme growth, right? So it just depends on the investment, but you want to make sure that all of those points in your financial plan are working together to get that end goal accomplished. And I think that's one of the biggest things when you call in for that discovery meeting and you give that call, that, that the number that Ron gives you guys throughout the show, you're going to come in, sit down, spend an hour with me at that discovery meeting. And we're going to take a full assessment, a full second opinion of your current financial plan and see if we can make sure that all of those things in your investment portfolio do make sense and making sure they're working together. And that's what that discovery meeting's for, is for you guys to come in, spend an hour and see if we can't be a good fit and look at the investment and make sure that you're ready to bobsled, make sure everything makes sense, and make sure everything's working together. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Before you go out and hop on a bobsled, uh, call that number and uh, arrange to have a conversation with Logan Sadler, a discovery meeting, if you will. You can discover things about him and about the business, and he can discover things about you. It's kind of a get acquainted session. And you know what? There is no cost for this at all and no obligation involved. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. That is the number for Regary Financial with convenient offices in Hemet and Redlands. You can meet via Zoom if you'd like, or it may just start with a phone call. Whatever. It's up to you to reach out. 888-823-PLAN. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. Go tell everybody you know Logan's on the radio, and we'll be right back with more in just a moment. Do you ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too, and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show, because we have some important information coming up. And the beat goes on, the financial beat. Logan Sadler is on the radio. Go tell everybody you know. Logan is the vice president and chief investment officer at Regary Financial. Southern California, offices in Redlands and also Hemet. And you can find out more about the business by going to financialbeatradio.com. That is financialbeatradio.com. But the all-important phone number, if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan about your individual situation... One-on-one, 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN. Call that number. Leave your, your name and your phone number. You'll get a call back, and then you can arrange to have what we call a discovery meeting. That's kind of a getting-to-know-you session. No cost, no obligation. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make that happen. Got a quote of the week here for you from one of the funniest human beings on the planet uh, back in the day. George Burns uh, once said, don't stay in bed unless you can make money in bed. I suppose <laughs> there's a lot of different ways you could go with that comment back yeah. then. But these days, I suppose some people can make money in bed by, you know, lying there on a computer, propped up and, and doing business and working from home. Yeah, like you said, a lot of, a lot of different uh, interpretations of that. But I think, uh, you know, that, that's a great quote. I mean, I, the way I look at it is, like you said, you could look at it from today's world where, yeah, people are probably making money in their, in their beds on their phones or their iPads or of that, of some, something of that sort. But the way I look at it is I think a lot of, the, lot of us are sometimes get lazy and lay around a little too much. And I think the biggest thing is if you're not, you know, if you're not being productive in bed, get up and go do something productive. Go for a run or go to work or go do something that is going to make you a little bit more productive than just staying in bed. I think George Burns probably had something else in mind when he 
said that because that was years Probably. ago be- before computers and the internet and all that kind of stuff. But uh, at any rate, uh, point well taken. Hey, you know, uh, you you talk all the time. Uh, we have discussions on this show about how so many people don't have any idea uh, how much f- they're paying in fees, or you know, they're they're they've got all kinds of expenses involved with their portfolio that they're not mm-hmm. aware of. Uh, just because you can't plainly see all the expenses that you'll incur during the retirement planning process, that does not mean that they aren't there. First of all, uh, mutual fund expenses. Explain mm-hmm. that one if you would. Yeah, that's a big one. I think uh, it's funny. Well, a lot of people, when they come in for that discovery meeting, part of our process is we take all of their statements and everything, and I'll do a full breakdown. And if they have mutual funds, we'll pull up a lot of the different expenses in the mutual funds just to talk about. And again, not that fees are bad, but it's just something we got to really kind of outweigh and see if it's something that we can't cut cost on and, and still get similar performance or, or risk or return and all that other all the other things that go into that. But mutual fund expenses, to your point, Ron, is something where um, they can sometimes be found in the prospectuses or other, other sometimes sometimes they're a little bit harder to uncover than that. But there's so many extra expenses that go with mutual funds that a lot of people don't really understand what they're paying. Typically, you have an advisory fee. Okay, So let's say you have a mutual fund and you have a broker or an advisor that manages your mutual funds for you. You meet with them at his office or her office. That They're typically getting paid what's called an advisory fee. So they're, you know, you're probably paying them between 1% to 2%, depending on what type of an advisor you have or what type of service you're receiving. Then there's also mutual fund expense ratios or expense costs that I meet with a client right now. She came in and uh, she's a, just getting ready to retire. She's actually a retired nurse and, and uh, going to be a retired nurse. And she had a lot of these other mutual funds. And so we were able to kind of look through it. She had some of them that were as high as 1.3% mm. in expense cost for just that fund. Yeah. So you look at at some of these different costs in the mutual funds, I've seen them be very high. The average on a mutual fund, I would say, is probably between probably between a quarter of a percent to one and a quarter. I've seen them anywhere kind of in that range. And again, that's a lot of extra expense to be having on an investment that we didn't weren't even really aware of. You know, So I think uh, there's also other things like upfront commissions and stuff like that, and other mutual funds that we'll, I'm sure we'll touch on later. But you really want to understand those, those kind of hidden expenses in the funds that are really dragging the weight of your portfolio down when for those of you that don't understand what I'm what I'm saying is kind of like apples to apples you can have an S&P 500 mutual fund that might cost you basically a half a percent or maybe 1% in expense cost you might be able to find that same ETF for exchange traded funds tracking the same index for maybe a fifth of a percent so i mean there's a lot of other ways out there we could typically cut costs and still get similar returns and similar diversification Lots of times people come in to see you for the very first time and you kind of analyze what they have and, uh, mm-hmm. and what they're being charged and all that kind of thing. And they are absolutely shocked at some of the fees they are paying inside mm-hmm. a variable annuity, for example. Yeah. That's probably the number one culprit right there. Yeah, you're you're uh, you're a hundred percent right there. I think uh, a lot of people say, yeah, I've heard I've heard annuities are really bad because of the fees. And when they say that, they're almost always talking about variable annuities. And uh, I'm not one of those people that says any investment is really bad. It's just got to be very specific for a specific person. And that is what a variable annuity is for, in my opinion. Is they're not for everybody. They can serve a purpose for a small for a small majority of people looking for a specific purpose. But the biggest thing that comes out of the variable annuity is the fees. I mean, there's a lot of different ways where, like you said, Ron, we'll start doing our our analysis and breakdown of a client's portfolio and be able to pull out some of these fees and see. And uh, some of these people are just absolutely shocked. I mean, you might have what's called an income rider, right? Well, they'll pay you out like a pension on that annuity. That might cost you, let's just say, 1%. Then you have a death benefit cost of a half a percent. Then you have a sub account fee of quarter of a percent. And then you have an advisory fee of 1%, right? So you might be paying uh, just shy of 3% for this variable annuity. And so that, you know, you look at 3% of fees, that would really drag down performance. So there's a lot of different things with variable annuities or a lot of different components of variable annuities that can be rather tricky. Again, it's really got to be in my opinion, it's got to be set up for a specific purpose and serving a specific goal. Or most of the time, we're actually better off doing other investments that might be able to uh, provide that same level of income or protection or death benefit, but typically able to do it for a lot less cost. So variable annuities is one of those ones where if you have one and are wondering what the costs are, uh, yeah, give us a call. Come in. I'd love to sit down and kind of analyze the portfolio and look at that variable annuity and kind of show you uh, if it does make sense for you or not. 
We're talking about hidden expenses that you may incur, and uh, uh, this is the Financial Beat with Logan Sattler, of course, for Gary Financial. Logan's number, by the way, if you'd like to have a conversation with him about your specific scenario, is 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN. Here's one that a lot of folks don't even think about. If you're planning uh, your retirement if you're trying to do it on your own, chances are you haven't really considered inflation. And in fact, there are some financial advisors out there, so-called advisors, who don't even take inflation into account. Mm-hmm. And Logan, that's a very important part of the planning process, isn't it? It, it really is. I, I, can't, I can't say it's the most important, but it's a very important component because uh, like you said, some advisors will set clients up and say, okay, with Social Security and uh, withdrawals from your portfolio, you could take $5,000 per month and you should be okay for you know 20 years. Well, what happens if goods go up? What happens if inflation goes up? And, and it will go up over a period of time, obviously. Um, sometimes they're more you know, exponential, like right now where we're getting this huge inflation boost. But historically, it's between, it depends on what charts you read, but they're between you know 2 and 3% is kind of historical inflation. So one thing I like to look at is there's a lot of different charts we'll have where I'll kind of show some clients on some of our slideshows where if you had a thousand dollar a month pension in 10 years, that same pension might only buy $744 of goods, right? So the buying power of that thousand a month went down significantly. There's another one where it's a client has a million dollars at a 4% inflation rate. If, if that didn't earn any money, right? At 4% inflation rate, you'd be looking at only 680,000 in 10 years. So there's a lot of those scenarios where in, inflation could just be such a huge silent, I call it a silent killer because we don't necessarily see the negative impact on the overall portfolio. We only see it at the end when we're pulling money out to cover the cost of the, of the inflation going up. You know, it's not like market volatility where you could check your phone and see, okay, I lost 10% today. It's something where it slowly impacts you over that retirement. And it's something that, like you said, not a lot of advisors plan for. And it's definitely something we have to cover in a financial plan and any good a successful financial plan to make sure that we're keeping up with inflation and covering all those expenses down the road. Okay, here's another one you really have to be aware of, especially in this day and time when we're all expecting taxes to go up. I mean, it's pretty much a given that they're going to have to go up at some point. Taxes increases. Uh, taxes are going to go up. And I think, you know, that's one of the things that Logan always takes into account, uh, what your taxes are going to be in the future. Yeah, it's tax planning is something to me that's so underrated. As an advisor, I always like to say I'm not licensed to file taxes. I don't give specific tax advice. But what we do is we do give tax planning. There's so many times we could work out different structures with uh, putting away money or structuring different investments to really be more tax efficient. And then for some of our more complicated cases, we obviously work with uh, lots of different CPAs or we'll work with your CPA if you're a client of ours and have one you like to make sure we're really doing you know in-depth tax planning. Because another, like I said, another silent killer Tax planning is one of those things where most people do think taxes are going to go up. So how will that affect your IRAs and 401k withdrawals down the road? Most people don't take that into account. You have to look at all the different variations. You look at a lot of people don't know the difference between capital gains or ordinary income. And there's a, there's a lot of other ways to take advantage of capital gains, which historically are a lower tax than ordinary income. There's also other things like Roth IRAs, Roth conversions, life insurance. There's a lot of other ways to structure to get maybe tax-free or more tax-efficient money out of a portfolio. And I always tell people, not every time we're able to do some of these, some of these uh, topics I mentioned, but a lot of the times we're able to implement some of them and make a huge difference in saving sometimes thousands on taxes throughout your retirement. And there's not enough advisors out there spending the time to do tax planning, right? They would just rather put you in a mutual fund portfolio or put, put you in an annuity, but not really understand the impact of, of the taxes later. And so it's something where if we can do tax planning, if it's something where it makes sense, it's, it's 100% something we need to, to look at and explore that option. Logan, there are a lot of people out there, and, and they may have been told this their whole life, that you know when you retire, your expenses are going to be lower. But you know the truth is, when you retire, your expenses might even be higher, especially in the early years of your retirement. Because if you're planning on traveling, if you're planning on uh, doing some fun leisure activities, for example, if you're going to play golf every other day, it's going to cost a lot of money, right? Yeah, that's a, another, you're right on the point today, Ron. So yeah, there, there's a lot of those where it's such a big, uh, a big hidden expense you don't see coming. 
most people spend the majority of their retirement or the highest portion of their retirement during the first five years. Because like you said, it's such a huge transition from some of you might be working 40 or 50 or 60 hours a week, and you might only get one or two days at home with the kids or the family. And so once you're retired and it's just you and your spouse or just you, you're, you're going to want to go on that vacation. You're going to want to go out to that diner and eat. You're going to want to go have a nice dinner when you can. And so a lot of that does slowly sneak up on you and you have more time to uh, really pursue those traveling plans and those things you didn't get to do during your working years. So like you said, there's a lot of different impacts on spending too much money too early. And so I always like to kind of show clients, again, not just my opinion, but as I mentioned in the, in the recent segments was focusing more on goals. And I think that's where it really comes down to where we'll show them, well, if we took more money out earlier, this is how it would affect the portfolio in the long run. And I think really relying more on realistic goals is something that's very important because you might be one of those people that might want to spend more money early because you're younger. Let's say you retire at 60 or 65, right? You're still really young to go travel and enjoy everything you wanted to do. So let's make sure we're structuring the portfolio. If that's if that's an option in the portfolio, how are we going to do it and how will that affect us later? And making sure we're looking at more of the data points on that to, again, live that luxurious lifestyle that you might want to live. I, I do have... Uh, I do have some clients that maybe don't even spend as much as they did when they were working as they do in retirement. They may spend a lot less in retirement, but there is a good majority of people that spend more. So I think it's something where, again, just kind of hammering out your goals and, and kind of having that conversation of how do you envision retirement? What is it you're wanting to do? When are you kind of wanting to do it? And how are we going to implement those strategies to, to fulfill those goals? And uh, that's, again, it sounds really, really complex, but that's everything we cover at that discovery meeting. So a lot of the clients that have came on board and met with us at the discovery meeting, we cover a lot of those topics that we mentioned throughout here, mutual fund costs, variable annuities. We'll talk about how to plan and, and protect during inflation and tax increases. And really make sure, again, when you give us a call, you're actually meeting with a comprehensive financial advisor that looks at more than just investments and really looks at how all of these different pieces in your retirement puzzle can all fit together. So give us a call. I'd love to spend an hour with you and uh, go over that discovery meeting process. Do you want a financial advisor who takes a comprehensive outlook and uh, looks at everything, uh, all-encompassing uh, way of uh, planning your retirement? Well, then call Logan Sadler, 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN, 888 888- 8-823-7526. That number is for Regary Financial, offices in Hemet and Redlands. And again, if you'd like to have a one-on-one conversation with Logan Sadler, we call it a, a discovery meeting. It could start with just a phone call. Maybe it's a Zoom connection. Maybe you might want to come into one of the offices. But to get it started, to get it planned, 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. Why not go ahead and reach out today? You know, you may be spending more money in retirement than you have always thought because they always say that people spend more money on Saturdays than they do any other day of the week. And Saturday is a day when you're, you know, running errands and doing things you haven't had a chance to do uh, all week long. But when you're retired, every day is Saturday. So, you know, what's that going to mean? 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like a conversation with Logan. It's not going to cost you anything and doesn't carry with it any kind of obligation. You're listening to The Financial Beat. I'm Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler. There's more on the other side of this timeout. Did you know music is good for the heart? A study at a university in Italy showed that music helps promote a better cardiovascular system. But we also know that a sound financial plan is good for peace of mind. Keep listening to The Financial Beat so we can help you find a plan that both your head and your heart can agree on. We're back now with more of The Financial Beat. I'm Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Logan enjoys doing this radio show because every time folks call, he gets a chance to meet new people and help new people. And uh, in fact, uh, Logan gets up in the morning and looks himself in the mirror and says, I'm going to go out and help somebody today. And that's exactly what he does with so many of the folks 
at uh, Regary Financial. They have great partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, Medicare specialists to help offer well-rounded guidance in all things financial for their clients. Get a discovery meeting going. It's not going to cost you anything and not going to obligate you to do anything at all down the road. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Call that number right now. If you haven't written it down, uh, please do it right now. 888-823-PLAN. Uh, Logan, some crazy stories come up here on this show sometimes. And I read earlier this week that there's a man in Nevada who was arrested after a series of car crashes because he was driving the wrong way on a busy highway, uh, in, on an interstate, I suppose. Now, in court, he claimed that Dale Earnhardt's ghost instructed him to drive the wrong way. You know, <laughs> what kind of a defense is that? <laughs> I don't think that's going to hold up in court. Right? That doesn't sound like it has a lot of backing to it or, or even be able to be proved. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose if you go out and do something wild and crazy, just make up some kind of wild and crazy story behind it, and uh, then they can maybe get you off on a technicality because you were not thinking uh, yeah. you know, in a very sane fashion at the time that it happened or whatever. He, he probably was thinking, I got nothing to lose here. I'll just throw it out, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, let's talk about, uh, you know, it, it. I guess he came up with a plan, but let's talk about the planning process when it comes to financial matters. <laughs> You know, it's important to be able to recognize the difference between an advisor who actually has a planning process and one who just gives sales pitches all day. And what are some signs, Logan, that an advisor is more focused on selling, selling you a product, pushing certain programs and products, uh, more focused on that than actual financial planning? Yeah, great point, Ron. And and, uh, there is a lot of that out there, I think, in every industry, but there's a lot of that in the financial industry. And, uh, you know, product, there's a a few of them. Some of them will relate more to product, right? The product they recommend is very early in the conversation. So you might have sat down, talked to them for 10 or 15 minutes, and they say, hey, I have this perfect investment for you, right? And so um, when when you get in front of that person, they haven't even gathered your information yet or really took the time to understand what it is you're trying to accomplish. And they're recommending a product very early which means that they're probably you know, a product pusher. They probably have maybe only one or two products to offer. And uh, that's why they're throwing it out so early, because they probably already knew what they were going to offer before you walked in the door. So I think that's something really important. The other thing that kind of goes in line with that is not gathering an, a, that much information about you and your goals. I know when our clients come in and sit down for that new meeting or that discovery meeting, we spend about an hour to an hour and a half really just kind of going over goals. And, and you got to look at things like what's your current income? What's your risk? Uh, what are your kids like? What do you want to do with your kids? Are you going to pay for college? Um, you know, what are your goals? You got to look at a lot of different things like that, where it's very important to gather that information before we even make an investment or recommendation uh, for a product or, or a vehicle, because it's so important to understand what it is your goals are, not only today, but you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, and 20 years from now, because any good advisor is really trying to build a relationship with a client that's going to last you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years in some cases. So not gathering enough information to me is a, is a, is a red flag. The other one is I have some, I've had some clients where they've told me this from other advisors where they literally just pointed out nothing but bad things about their current portfolio or about their current advisor. And I think that is, and only points out the good things about what they're recommending, right? I think that's another thing where most of the time when you're coming in to meet us, some of our clients don't have a plan or or they're kind of getting a second opinion or getting ready to retire and get one. So I will point out some of the benefits to what they currently have. And you want to look at things from, you know, it's really hard for some advisors to look at things from an outside lens and not be so critical, but also look at look at this from uh, the client's point of view. They've obviously got here a lot of the clients we meet with. You know, they've worked at Costco or Edison or nurses, and they've had a successful career and done very well up till this point. So not everything they did was bad, right? So I yeah. think <laughs> that's another thing a lot of advisors don't get. So it's really important that when you're meeting with an advisor or your current advisor, you want to make sure you're making sure that it's not just someone that's pushing a product and they're really taking the time to get to 
understand who, who you are and what your family is and what you're trying to accomplish. Logan, I know a lot of what you do is based on relationships. You build a relationship with someone over time. You get to know them. You get to know their hopes and dreams and what yeah. they hope to accomplish in their retirement years. And some of these people who come out right out of the gate pushing some kind of a product don't do that at all. So that's mm-hmm. a really good point. Uh, take a moment to describe your planning process from mm-hmm. start to finish, starting with the moment when somebody walks into your door for the very first time, what can they expect the process to look like? Yeah, that, that's a really great point, Ron. And I, I think a lot of you that listen to the show regularly know some of our planning process. And if your advisor can't explain the pre- planning process, or if you're meeting with someone that doesn't have a planning process, that's another red flag. But to tell you about our process is everything starts with that discovery meeting. Uh, like Ron always says, you know, you give the number a call, come in for the discovery meeting. And really, that's where we're going to spend between an hour to an hour and a half, just getting to understand who you are, what your family's like, you know, what is your experience with money? What's been on your mind? How, how can we, what are some of the worries you've had when it comes to money? Uh, there's a lot of in-depth questions like that, that that has nothing to do with a product or an investment recommendation, but just getting to understand who the client is and their family and what they're trying to do. And then we have our second meeting where typically after that, we've already got your statements. We've went over a lot of the different uh, pros and cons of your current investment plan. You're, you've already told me in that first meeting what your goals and concerns and where you want to be. So the second meeting is then when we propose a strategy, we'll go over, hey, here's some things I think we can make some minor adjustments to to make a big difference in the long run. And that's when we'll talk more about investments and how, how this process can work better for you in the long run. And we still don't push anything, okay? That's still not when any uh, paperwork is done or any decisions are made. Then you come back in for that third meeting. So we have that three meeting process to where then we'll go over how we're going to implement this and, and what this will look like and how long it takes and, and all of the pros and cons of doing this to make sure we've really ironed out all the details. So there's a three meeting process where typically you've already met with us now. You know, you spent between three and four hours with us at this point. So we typically have a pretty good idea of who you are, what you're trying to accomplish on our end. But on your end, you have a really good idea of who we are. Are, what our process is, and you typically at that point feel more than comfortable to make an informed decision where we have all the data and you've went through that three meeting process to make sure that we were a good fit for you and you were a good fit for us. So it's typically, that's exactly how our planning process goes with every client. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. I'm Ron Stutz. And Logan, I know you've been doing this for a pretty good while now. And with all of your years of experience, What's different about your process at this stage of your career compared to when you first started out? Yeah, that's a that's a really great question. I think uh, a lot of us, when we first get in the financial industry, you're so excited. There's so many different investments out there. There's so many pros and cons of each of these investments that you typically spend a lot more time on product, and you know, and that's when you typically narrow down and become more of not necessarily a product pusher, but just somebody that focuses on investments. And I think that's the wrong way, in my opinion, to go. I think where we've made the biggest adjustments as a firm and, and as myself as an advisor is to really be more goal driven and really rely more on how does this plan affect and how do these decisions we make in the plan affect the long run and what investments do we need to utilize to plug in to fit those goals. So I think switching our switching my mindset from more of a, a product relationship business to, to more of a goal-based business and how can we get to where that goal is. And I've really seen it be a huge benefit for lots of our clients to see of more of that goal-driven atmosphere because what that allows us to do is rely a lot less on product or investments and really focus more on the relationship and the plan. Just one more question I want to ask you about this whole yeah. planning process at Regary Financial and uh, with Logan Sadler. Uh, Logan, what do you think is unique about your process? In other words, what is somebody likely to experience with you and your office that they're probably not going to get with any other advisor? Yeah, another one. Good, good question, Ron. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing about us that makes a lot of people tend to come on board with us or stay with us for long, long periods of time is we spend a lot of time with new clients or new prospects when they walk in our door. Like I said, an hour to an hour and a half discovery meeting. We have a second meeting and a third meeting. So, I mean, we're looking at probably three to four hours with a client before they even decide to do business with us. And I think a lot of people out there typically want to do one meeting and move investments or maybe two meetings and then move investments. And I think the clients really 
appreciate that we take the time to understand them, their family, and their goals. So I think that is one of the biggest things that separates us from some of these other advisors out there is that we take the time to really get to understand our clients and allow them to get to understand us and our values and our beliefs on on investments and planning. And I think uh, that also translates into our existing clients. A lot of our clients that have been with us, you know, they retired from you know Costco or Edison 10, 10 years ago, and they still hear from us. It's not like they see us once a year or once every three years. We still do our quarterly reach out where we're touching base t- and, and going over and reviewing plans. So I think just being uh, extremely giving with our time has really been proven to just make clients feel uh, a lot more appreciated and a lot more comfortable in the investment plan because of that constant contact we have with our clients to make sure that we're still in the proper investments, we're still in the right plan for us, and to make sure things are still moving in the direction the clients wanted. I think that's what you know really separates us from the other advisors. If I had to pick one thing, that would definitely be the one thing. Logan, I have the feeling that a lot of people listening to the financial beat today are ready to pull the trigger. Maybe they've been putting it off for a while and decided to go ahead and and make that phone call into your office. What's going to happen after they call that number and that I'm going to give out here in just a moment? uh, After they call the number and leave their name and address, what's going to happen at that point? Yeah, so perfect. That's exactly when you'll get to come in for that discovery meeting. I know we've met with doctors, nurses, a lot of different people that have been calling in and and, uh, from all different types of careers. And that's exactly what we do is we specialize in retirement planning. If you're between the ages of 55 and 60 and approaching that retirement train, give us a call. Let's sit down. Let's go over some of the pros and cons and look at your current portfolio and uh, get to understand your goals and see where you're trying to get and see if we wouldn't be a good fit to help get you there. And that's exactly uh, what you could expect that discovery meeting. Meeting. Again, uh, no product pushing, no uh, no no high pressure meeting. It's really just a great conversation to see if we can't be a good fit together to get you into retirement. Eight 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 two three plan. Eight 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 two three plan. That number is the, the number to call, and that's your first step. Well, actually, the first step is listening to this show, and the second step is making that phone call, and then the third step is when you're going to get a call back, and you can arrange the time for that discovery meeting. So important for them to get to know you at. Gary Financial, and you can get to know Gary Financial as well, and specifically Logan Sadler, same guy you hear on the radio here. His number, 888-823-PLAN. Call that number for a discovery meeting, no cost, no obligation. There's more coming up about getting you to and through retirement on today's edition of the Financial Beat, and we'll be right back in just a moment. At the end of the day, no one truly understands your financial wants and desires better than you. That's why it's important to have financial independence. This means you can work when you want, you know exactly where your income is coming from, and most importantly, your finances are stable. If this sounds like something you want, well, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. And Logan Sadler and his team at Regary Financial can provide you with their free guide on achieving financial independence. The free guide will show you how to create an action plan for getting to where you want to be. It'll explain how to calculate a financial independence goal. And it'll define what an ice egg is and why it's so important. Download it now by texting the word ADVICE to the number 21000. Again, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 to gain your financial independence today. Do you hear that? That's the sound of a plan that has some serious issues. Ah, much better. That's the sound of a plan that was created by someone listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. So which sound is your financial plan making? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. He is the VP and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial, Hemet and Redlands, serving you wherever you happen to be in Southern California, wherever you're listening today. Remember that Logan Sadler also hosts educational seminars and webinars on estate planning, retirement income, taxes, and retirement at local universities and senior centers, as well as online, getting back to doing more of that these days after a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, Logan works with all three generations of some of the client families. Many clients have been with his firm for more than a quarter of a century, and it's a very long time. If you'd like to have a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler, he can get to know you, you can get to know him, and it's not going to cost you any money at all. You don't have to move any money anywhere, 
anything like that. No obligation to do it in the future either. The Financial Beat number is 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN. Call that number today. Leave your name and phone number. You'll get a call back first part of the week. 888-823-PLAN. Hey, Logan, we always talk about federal crimes on this show. Not that we're obsessed with uh, criminality or uh, committing crimes, but there are some crazy ones on the books. And every week we try and bring you one federal crime that's somehow related to money in one way or another because we're always looking out for you. So, Logan, did you realize it's a federal crime to sell sliced canned pizzas unless the pizzas are cut into wedge-shaped sectors? (laughs) <laughs> no, another one had no idea on that one. That's a very specific sliced peach, huh? Yeah, no kidding. I, and I, you know, I don't know how some of these things ever got to be laws. I suppose, as we always say, somebody tried to do it another way, and they wanted to make sure that, you know, you couldn't do it that way in the future. So, you well, know, got to you know, cut some of these, wedges. Yeah, I mean, some of these are pretty... Uh, pretty kind of, I call them dumb moments, right? Where you're like, well, duh, that's uh, obvious. But on this one, I, I don't understand the reasoning behind that. But yeah. like you said, there must must be a specific reason and someone must have done it the wrong way. And that's why it's a law, I would assume. I think it's time to get rid of some of these dumb laws that are on yeah. the books. You narrow the books down. I mean, just, just taking up... Uh just taking up space, you know, that's yep. ridiculous. Hey, let's go to the mailbag here because we have some really great questions from our listeners this week. First one is from Kate in Menifee, and Kate says, I've heard that I should be saving 15% of my income toward retirement, but I'm going to be honest, that seems really impossible for me to do right now. Am I going to be eating cat food in retirement if I don't save that much? Yeah, uh, Kate, thanks for writing in. I appreciate, uh, appreciate you listening to the show. You know, I think that the the saving fifteen percent for for income in retirement or for retirement planning is something that a lot of advisors like to stick to that ten to fifteen percent rule of your income, and uh, you know it is a very safe number because the the odds of you show and I don't know how old you are uh, that's not on the not on the right end but let's just say you're twenty five or thirty years old and just starting out um, that ten to fifteen percent income is going to be a great amount to where when you retire you're going to be able to statistically probably live off of as much or more money than you're living off of now in retirement which is obviously what you'll need, right? Because the cost of inflation and the cost of income and everything needs to go up over that time frame. So 10 to 15% is typically a good kind of a rule of thumb. And I don't base everything off rule of thumb, but it is that is kind of like the rule of thumb number. Now, with that being said, I have some clients, like I was meeting with a client the other day, and uh, you know she makes around $250,000 a year, mm-hmm. and we were having to put uh, you know 10 to 15% of her income would have been right around 30,000, would have been closer to the 15%. And she was later in her, in her working year, so it's something where we might need to do more than the 15% now to catch up, to be able to make sure that we're not eating off cat food in retirement, like you said. And so <laughs> I think one of the most important things is I, you know, we, meet, we, we specialize more in retirement planning a lot of the clients that we meet with are typically older or transitioning into retirement. But the younger clients we do work with, um, like it sounds like it might be in your case, where it's very important that a lot of clients will come in and we'll show them uh, when they're younger the impact of putting away 10 to 15% and what that means over a 15 or 20 year or 30 year working career, what you can end up with. And, you know, I always say most of the most of the nurses or people people of clients of ours that come in that have over millions of dollars, you know, is done through people putting away 10 to 15% of their income consistently over a long period of time. You'd be amazed at how quickly that adds up. And uh, one little last piece of advice for you on that is Tony Robbins. I'm sure you guys have all heard of him. He has this one. I, I listened to a video of his. This is years back. Yeah. And he had this one one little thing where he said, save 15% of your income. And the guy had said, well, what if I can't do that? He said, well, what happens if the government raised taxes 15%? You would pay it, right? You'd figure out a way to pay it. Yeah. And so figure out a way to pay yourself, I think, is what the moral of that, what the moral of that quote is, is figure out a way to pay yourself. Uh, making small adjustments, you'd be surprised that maybe you can't do all 15%, but you probably can get really close without really, really cutting too much and just being more structured on your budget. Logan, I don't know about you, but I haven't eaten any cat food lately, but it's not something I, I want to do. And, I wouldn't be excited about it, that's for sure. No, not at all. Uh, next question here is from Ricky in uh, Lake Arrowhead. Uh, Ricky says his financial advisor is older than he is. Should he move to somebody else who won't retire before he does? You know, uh, that is not a crazy question at all. And so 
Um, Ricky, thanks for writing in. Appreciate you listening to the show. For those of you listening that have never watched any of our videos or never met me in person, I am on the, and especially in the financial world, a lot of the financial advisors are older. Um, I am more on the younger side. And uh, it's funny, I get a lot of compliments for being younger because a lot of people that I'm meeting with are, let's say they're 50 or 60 years old, and they're going to be retired for 20 or 30 years. And they want to make sure that the person that they're doing business with or doing the plans with is going to be around in the future. So I'm not saying that's a, the, the best reason to leave a financial advisor, but I do have a lot of clients that do choose to come with us because of that reason or leave other advisors because of that firm or that person being a little uh, little older than them or, or the same age as them and maybe worried about them retiring. Who's going to replace them? And so that is not... Uh, not a crazy question. I would just really make sure that uh, the advisor has what we call a, you know, a succession plan or a legacy plan. Make sure that person has somebody him up if he does decide to retire or if something were to happen to him. I know we have one here at our firm to make sure, even though I am on the younger side, but to make sure that if something did happen to me that, that the business can obviously continue on. So I don't think that's a crazy question. It's something I would just kind of really ask yourself and make sure that it's still a good working relationship and to make sure that you you want somebody that is going to be around in the future to be able to guide you through those next steps, but not a bad question at all. Very tough one. I would just really, like I said, kind of hammer it down and, and ask that question to that advisor or, or give us a call. As we talked about earlier in the show, it's a lot about relationships. And when you have a client, you're going to get to know that client very, very well. Uh, yeah. The client is going to get to know you very well. And uh, when something disturbs that, when if you retire, then chances are the, the next person is not going to know you as well. So, uh, you know, that's a very legitimate question. Glad that uh, Ricky yeah. decided to ask it. Uh, last question of the day is from Alfonso in Redlands. Alfonso says, I'm retiring in about five years, and I'm currently maxing out my 401k, but not doing any other savings. Uh, Logan, should I be saving anywhere else, even if that means putting less money into my 401k? That's a great. That's another great question. These are three great questions today, Alfonso. I would say if you're currently maxing out your 401k and you could put, be putting away more money than that, yes, there's a lot of different options out there. And without knowing specifically, you know, your income, your tax bracket, and things of that sort, I can't get super specific on this on this particular question. But the the short answer is, yeah, there is a lot of different ways to continue to save outside the 401k while also still either maximizing or really making sure that we're using the 401k to its full benefit, which is obviously the tax deferred ability as well as tax being able to get that tax deduction on your current income taxes. So there is other things out there. And I see so many people where they say, hey, Logan, I'm maxing out my 401k and I'm able to put away more money right now because I know I'm retiring in a few years and I'd really like to save more money, but you really, there's no other place to really do it. And uh, there is a lot of other ways. There's things like obviously bank accounts, but as we know, those aren't paying much in interest these days. But there's other things like individual brokerage accounts or what we call just taxable accounts to where those might be a more tax efficient way for some of you to put away more money into those to where it's not going to help you on taxes now, but it might help you with tax advantages in the future. And so, like I mentioned on uh, earlier in this show, actually, the difference between capital gains and ordinary income. So when you retire, that 401k, when you begin to withdraw money out, is going to be, unless it's a Roth 401k, but if we're talking traditional 401k, it's going to be all taxed at ordinary income. Now, it's typically higher than what is taxed as capital gains. So in those taxable accounts I was talking about, we might be able to save a little bit more money to supplement the 401k savings, but might have some more tax advantage, uh, tax efficient uh, usabilities down the road that I think is very, very important to have in retirement. I think a lot of people we meet with are very worried about taxes while they're working and don't think enough about taxes in the future or tax diversification down the road. And I think to answer your question, a very long answer short, yes, there is some other things we could be doing to kind of supplement the 401k savings and making sure we're maximizing both current taxes and our future taxes. Alfonso, thank you very much for the question. Same goes to Ricky and Kate. Really good questions, as Logan said on today's show. Logan, I know that a lot of people may be on the fence about going ahead and calling you and placing that that whole process in motion. All they got to do is call the number and arrange a conversation, basically, is what it amounts to. What happens when you talk with someone for the very first time in a discovery meeting? 
Yeah, like you said, Ron, there's a lot of people that have been listening to the show now for most of the year and uh, maybe longer, and a lot of you guys have been listening to the show, and once you make that call, I have quite a few of you I'm actually currently working with where you guys were actually probably very surprised. I think it was a lot like the show where it was very uh, very general conversation where we were able to kind of get to understand each other and really understand. I have some of you called in that you know you guys already had a financial advisor and uh, were able to find a lot of value and benefit out of us and really understanding that we look at the big picture. A lot of our clients that come in, uh, some of them have only annuities or only stock market, and they're just looking for somebody that can offer everything and be able to look at more than just one type of investment or asset class and making sure that they have an advisor that really has their best interest at heart and really making sure that we have a diversified investment plan that they feel comfortable in. And and that's exactly what you get when you call into the Financial Beat. Uh, you get to meet, actually, you get to sit down with myself, either via Zoom or in person. And uh, we're going to spend about an hour, hour and a half together and just really dive into how we could help you better plan and prepare for retirement. 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. It's important to point out that uh, if you're sitting in the office or if you are uh, getting together via Zoom, because of technology these days, Logan Sadler can show you a lot of the same things he would show you uh, if you were sitting in his office. It, it's all very easy. It's all very pleasant. It's going to be a kind of a down-home conversation, uh, nothing complicated, no pressure, no salesmanship, nothing like that. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to make that conversation happen. Uh, get a discovery meeting going, but first, reach out with a phone call, 888 823 plan. That number is for Gary Financial. Offices in Hemet and Redlands. Logan Sadler is the person you will talk with. He's not going to push off on anybody else. Same guy here on the radio. 888-823-PLAN. Ron Stutz here along with Logan Sadler. And Logan, I got to say, you passed out a lot of good information here today. And I know you're going to get a lot of phone calls from our listeners. Yeah, I appreciate it, Ron. I think we did cover uh, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good information. And uh, as always, just looking to provide uh, those of you driving around or listening at home, just looking to provide some extra value and some extra advice and education. So I hope uh, you guys found it informational. And as always, we will see you next week. 888-823-PLAN. That's the number to call for Regary Financial. Logan Sadler will join you again next week at the same time. The information provided is for educational purposes only and is not intended as investment advice for anyone. All information discussed is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. The views presented today are those of BD Financial Group and do not necessarily represent the views of Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC. The opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not constitute financial tax or legal advice. Please consult with your financial professional before executing any financial strategy. Investment advisory and financial planning services are offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Alpha Star and BD Financial Group are independent entities. SEC registration does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission, nor does it indicate that the advisor has attained a particular level of skill or ability.